Hey guys, what's up? Nico again here. And in this 3D Printed Profits episode, I have with us Nick. Nick, where are you coming from, man? I am in Carroll, Michigan. Carroll, Michigan. So Nick is just going to talk to us about how he started, so on and so forth. You guys have seen the show at this point. Um, but a couple of things. Make sure you guys join us in the 3D Printing Side Hustle group. The link to that is in the description below, where we just talk about, you know, how to start your own 3D printing business. And we help each other out, product ideas, marketing ideas, so on and so forth. Um, make sure you guys stay to the very, very end where I'm going to give you your own product ideas for your own 3D printing side business. All right? So all of Nick's links are going to be in the description below. If you're on YouTube and if you're on your favorite podcast player, it's going to be in the show notes. So without further ado, Nick, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me. So let's get started here with your background now. What is it that you do um, and how did you get into 3D printing? Well... You know, I went to school uh, for industrial design at the Art Institute of Pittsburgh uh, back in the day. Never really did too much with that degree. I I ended up, uh, I'm in the roofing industry now. I, I, I estimate roofs for contractors and I've made the switch from flat roofs to metal roofs a few years back. Um, a few years ago, though, I did, uh, it was probably five or six years ago, I can't remember, I wanted to get into 3D printing. Uh, Robo 3D was back in their Kickstarter days and I bought their, uh, Robo 3D printer and it, it wasn't the greatest. There was plenty of bugs. How, and how long ago that. was that? Cause I'm that unfamiliar have, with like that. I said, that might've been five, six years ago, maybe longer. I don't remember mm. exactly. I picked it up cause I wanted to try making some Lego pieces and everything like that. All right. All right. Um, but like I said, the machine, it was full of bugs. I, I, I wasn't happy with the machine. It kind of went to the side for a little bit, but then, uh, somebody I worked uh, worked with the director of engineering for my company, him and another person wanted to come up with a project. Um, they wanted my help designing it. So I'm like, okay, I did that. So I pulled it out. Um, you know, I was working, making designs and everything on this for, uh, for a special wheelchair wheel that, uh, we've just, you know, we've actually just got the patent done. So that's kind Congratulations. of, Congratulations. you know, but, but doing that and like, I had the reliability issues with that other printer. So I'm like, well, I'm going to pick up another three cheap 3d printer as a backup. And it was an Ender three. And, you know, for the cheap printer, it really worked great. Um, and that's what I was running for a while. Last year, I decided I want to start getting more into it. I started making a lot of my own stuff. Um, I picked up a 10 log TLD three with IDEX. Um, and I love that machine. You know, some people don't like them. They're, there's a bit of a learning curve to them. But, you know, the IDEX is really nice because a lot of the parts when I'm repeating them, it's like having two printers at once. Uh, I think last last year I picked up a resin printer, the Creality Halo 1 or Halo 1. I don't know how it's pronounced, honestly. But um, so I do some parts with that. And this year I made an investment on a 10 log TLD6, which is a same IDEX concept, but it's got like a 24 by 24 by 24 build volume. So I'm moving on to some larger stuff. It's um, huge. My God. Yeah. I actually have right behind me. I work a lot with old Dodge trucks and there's a grill I'm working on. And that, that grill I was able to do in one piece easily on that print. Wow. Okay. So I, I know you guys are driving and he Is just that? showed something. So just when you get back to the shop or your office or home, then you guys can see what he just showed, but yeah. All right. That, that's safe. something Be in safe. the works. It's not available as of yet. I do a lot. Yeah. And I do a lot with these old Dodges because I've got an old, I've got a couple of these old Dodge trucks and the nice okay. thing about them. So, um, so that's, that's what, that was my next question. So what is it yeah. that you guys sell exactly? Um, I'm, I have the policy that if you want it, and it's in my capabilities, I'll make it. But my bread and butter has been these old Dodge trucks because it's it's a nice thing where I pick up a, a niche market on there where these trucks, they're still pretty popular, but there's a lot of parts that aren't made and you just can't get. Um, some of the things I make, um, and they aren't, the pieces aren't just necessarily strictly 3D parts. Uh, I use them to make pieces from. One of the things I make is the little under the dash light, the map light, they call it. Um, 
you can't find these anywhere. If you're lucky, you'll find one in a junkyard, or if you find them on eBay, they're pretty expensive. So I, what I did is I took uh, the one out of my truck, copied it, you know, measured it up, made my own copy, and now it's powered by brighter LEDs. And I even go as far as on a lot of my things where I will go and I buy the little actual metal pins that plug in. So I recreate the plug and everything. So customers don't have to cut up their wiring harnesses. They don't have to, you know, if they ever want to get a stock piece and put it back in there, there's nothing cut up. Um, which is something a lot of people appreciate on these trucks. That's cool, other, man. You know, other people want to cut them up. Uh, and, but and, and so you're, you're only doing Dodge trucks, right? That's all I'm doing right now. Right um, now. Like, okay. So, yeah. And how much are you making it, it, on just Dodge trucks, man? That's my bread and butter right there. Like most everything I sell is off the Dodge trucks. Once in a while I sell, like I have a shifter handle I make for Tacomas because my son used to have a Tacoma and I made him a cool shifter handle and I posted it on there. The funny thing about that is this is my helper here, <laughs> but the funny thing about that one is that took that Tacoma shifter handle I get favorite that item is favorited five to ten times a week and I don't sell a heck of a lot of it. I still sell it though, but um right. and, and so how much is the business making a, a month profit on right now I'm at about fifteen hundred bucks a month. Uh -huh. It's been slowly growing, like uh it, it was about thousand dollars a month for a while, you know, then I started picking up when I release more products. That's pretty um, legit, man. Yeah. So how did you get your first customers and your first um your first clients here? Uh, you know, honestly, what I do is I just pay attention to what people need. Um, I come up with some of my own ideas, like uh, as like I said, with these Dodge trucks, I'm on the groups on Facebook and I see people like looking for this part, looking for that part. You can't find it, you know. Um, I one of a couple of things I made because people can't find. Not only that light, the cruise control switches that go on the steering wheel. They break, they're old, they break, you can't find them. Um, I've found them on eBay before, but you're paying 250 bucks for these little pieces of plastic. I took the ones I had, reverse engineer them. So now I get the switches, I solder them up and put them in and send them out for a lot less money than what you buy the actual factory switches for. There you go. Solving problems. That's yeah. what that's what makes money, man. I uh there's there's also like the the cab lights that go on the top of the roof of the truck, the stock ones. There, well, another thing rare and hard to come by if you find a set of original ones online you're spending 300 bucks for the set of five just the plastic housings not the lights or anything themselves so so how did you solve the uh, the warping from the heat issue what are you printing these with i mostly stick with uh petg petg okay that's yeah. how you solve the heat issue okay yeah. that's mostly what i do i've not had issues uh as far as that um you know, and like I said, most of the parts are the interior, which, you know, when I'm sending stuff out to like Texas and Arizona, I know they're getting hot in the trucks. Nobody said anything about any warpage on any of the parts or anything like that. I mean, I think the heat tolerance for PETG is a lot higher. Yeah. Because we do have to print them at a lot higher um, temperature. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty much all I use. I, I use, uh, I try and stick with Hatchbox. They've been pretty good for me. Sometimes I run into issues where I can't get it. Sometimes it seems like their supply is harder to get. So I might once in a while switch to an off brand, but that's pretty much who I stick with for right now. Gotcha. So what does your print farm look like now? Um, did you, did you then take the money from that you made initially and then buy more, more yeah. machines or how did that go? Um, like I said, I've got a total of uh, four machines operational right now. Oh, that's it. Um, yeah. Um, like I said, like, the 10 logs that I run, and like I was mentioned, they had the IDEX. I can print a lot of my parts too at the same time, you know, so they're like running, they're running double of what a normal printer was. And, and I, I basically, I'm usually only running my TLD six right now. I have my TLD three on the side. I don't remember the last time I under three actually ran, <laughs> but a lot of my parts that I have are like, they're just mass duplicated and I can run them and just have a whole bunch of them. Gotcha. Gotcha. So those long pieces, I'm surprised you're not running a CR6 on a belt printer where you can just keep cranking them out. I've, I've considered that. Um, actually when I bought the TLD six, I was trying to decide between the two. I wasn't sure about running pet G on the belt printer. I've I, I haven't seen anything on it. 
Um, but this also, the TLD6 gives me a lot wider range, not just the continuous belt. Um, it gives me a lot bigger build volume if I want to do something larger. I haven't, the largest things I've done have been those grills, but you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> gotcha. And like gotcha. I said, the, the belt printer does, also doesn't have the IDEX. So, and like so I, you're designing all of these, these parts and these designs, right? Do you sell your designs too, or is it all the designs? I do not. Has? I do not sell off my models. Um, I do a lot of work on my own and I'm the only one who has these. And that's, you know, as a that's, business, that's how you, you keep don't competition you, away. Right. I, you I get, get a that. lot of people. I, I can't count the number of times somebody are trying to get me to just sell, sell my model to them so they can print it. And I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. You know, gotcha. by, by the time I get it out, then everybody has it. And all of a sudden, you know, it's out there on Thingiverse and people are printing what I sell for 10 bucks, you know? Gotcha. Um, and, and, and when you design these, what design software are you using? I mainly use Inventor. I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have access to that. Um, you know, and I know it's not a program that a lot of people have. It's pretty expensive. Uh, when I don't, when I don't have that, um, I'll, I'll go to like, fusion 360 or free cad but like i said i've got inventor at home right now so that's perfect for me <laughs> okay. where did you learn how to use inventor or or fusion 360 um it's one of these things i took a fusion 360 is just self-taught from using in, inventor you know there's similarities that inventor i learned uh uh i got sent to a class from work because i was doing some design for work and everything like that i've done a few like 3d models and drawings for for uh rough details and everything like that before that i learned autocad in uh back when i was in school and i also used a program called form z way back and i don't know if you've ever even heard of that no. one. <laughs> but yeah so i mean I, like i've always had a good understanding of like the physical 3d design space and I'm, I'm a lot better using programs uh like the parametric programs instead of like uh, programs that are more free form you know but i'm i've got more of a technical background anyway so gotcha gotcha so how else does a business make money do you have design services too and and print services i have design i have i offer design services i don't get a heck of a lot of that and I, I don't know if that's just because i don't know the right market yet uh that i haven't reached but like i've done a few design things like i said i mentioned that one project i work on we just got the patent that's a design thing i've done i've done some other small things that people wanted um you know and, and i'll charge a little bit for my design time and you know then i'll you know sell them the model but it's not a lot of what i do gotcha um and what profit margin are you are you targeting for these for these prints? I don't really have a, a target profit margin. I I kind of like I look at the the market for what's there, and I and I find a spot where I'm going to be comfortable. Where you know, like on a lot of these items, where I'm well below factory replacement cost, but I'm making enough of a profit margin. Good to be comfortable and like some of my items like those lighter those cruise control switches more of my time is more in my labor because you know I, i'm cutting out led strips i'm soldering stuff together and everything like that you know there's more like actual physical assembly so those items they're not like a a real passive thing you know a lot of it's my labor so gotcha gotcha man and so what's working today in terms of marketing how have you grown the business um to where you are today and how are you growing it my biggest thing is uh, Facebook forums. I have I have my Etsy sale page, and you know my items will show up on Google searches, and I, which is nice for me. But like, my big thing is I come up with something, I'll go up to like all the pages, and I'll be like, "Hey, I've got this available," and you know, so many people come up, and I'll get orders coming in, and that's the way it's usually working for me. Gotcha, man. So that's really it for me for all my questions, dude. What's mm -hmm. next for you? How are we growing? Um, is it Prezado? Did I say yes. That right? How are we going Prezado Customs? How is that going to, what's the next, what's the future for it? Um, I'm really just going to try to keep what I'm doing to a larger degree, come up with new ideas and things to sell. Um, are you going to try to branch out to like Chevys and Fords? Yeah. And I, I've got to find people that are in those markets and everything like that. Um, I'm working on another 
project vehicle, which might have a little bit more of a limited market. But when I start making stuff for it, I'm going to set, I'm going to, you know, go out to the groups and put that stuff out there. I'm, I'm working on an old uh, 60s Cadillac. So you can imagine, you know, a limited market, yeah. but if it's there, it's there, you know, one, once I have my parts done then I just got to click print when they get in order, that's all I got to do. For sure, dude. Awesome, um, man. Well, dude, congratulations. That's $1,500 a month is, is for a side hustle. That's legit, man. Up in Michigan, that's a mortgage payment. So yeah, yeah. Free mortgage and, uh, for you, right? Um, uh, you know, I, I'm all paid off in my home. So it's, you know. Oh, wow. Congratulations, <laughs> man. Dude, that, yeah. So that's even better. So what is your number one tip? Let's wrap this up with your number one tip for everyone who wants to start their own 3D printing business. Um, don't be the same. Um, that's the thing. Like I said, find find a market. Don't, you know, don't try to horn in on somebody else's market. You find something that works for you, find a problem problem, and uh, make a solution for it. Um, you know, I see the thing I see way too much on these 3D printing groups, people buy the printer. They don't know anything about modeling. So they go and they'll find a, a website and they try to sell the same models that everybody's selling these prints for, for five, 10 bucks and making no profit on anything. Uh, get something out there that nobody else is doing. And, you know, where there's a demand, fill that demand. And that's where you're going to make your money. There you go. Advice from a wise man right there. All right, <laughs> you guys. So I told you if you stay till the very, very end, I'm going to give you your own product idea for your own 3D printing business. And today's product idea is pendants. Well, you know, like just little pendants. But the way you differentiate yourself, right, as Nick said, is who are you making these pendants for? Are you making pendants for truck truck guys are you making these pendants for women who love dragons are you making these pendants for women who love their home country what it makes something right it's a pendant but you have to make that pendant be different from all the other pendants that are out there for a specific type of person all right so that's it for today's episode Nick, thank you for joining us, man. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. Again, if you guys tune in Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, there's going to be a new episode. Nick, thanks for being here, man. All right. You have a great day.